Okay, um, I'm going to be doing a little video on the next section topic that we're going to be talking about in Java. So uh, before this, make sure that you review everything that I sent to you. So reviewing how to write to a file, how to, how to work with arrays, and then how to work with array lists. So the next topic um, in this chapter, which is talking more about classes, is how to pass objects as arguments. So remember that an object can be something like a string or an object can be a class that you created. So there's like the rectangle objects uh, in this example. So we create a rectangle class and then we create different rectangle objects. And in this example here, they're passing an object called box and the object itself contains an address. So the box, um, the box object doesn't contain the data, it contains the address where the data is kept. So this address, oh, go back. This address points to um, where the object is actually kept in memory. And this is where the data is. So here's a method, public static void display rectangle, and it receives an object. And the object that it's receiving is box. So the address of box gets sent to R. And now R has this object called box. So R is now pointing to the rectangle object. So let me draw this for a second. Um, change stuff here, draw. Okay, make sure it drew. So R right here, this object R is of type rectangle and it now contains the same address as box. So they both, R points to the rectangle object and box points to the rectangle object. So when we're here, we can say R.getLength and R.getWidth even though box was um, the object originally. Let's see, trash, clear all drawings, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, they just changed everything on Zoom and now I'm trying to figure out. Okay, returning objects from methods. So methods are not limited to returning the primitive data types, meaning you don't have to return just an integer or a float um, or a character. You can also return objects from a method. So here's an example of a method that's called get account. And this get account method is gonna return a new bank account with some starting balance. So we're returning an object and the object that we're returning is bank account. So what we put for the return type, it's gonna be right here, bank account. So here we typically put int or we put float, but now we're returning an object. The object is called bank account. or actually it just creates new, it doesn't even assign it like a new name, it just says new bank account balance. So wherever that's created, it, it sends that to um, wherever this method is called. Okay. 
Here we go. So here we have a, a call to get account. So we're calling a function, a method called get account, and it's returning an account. So an account is an object. Here's the get account um, method that we just looked at a second ago. When we say return new bank account, it returns the address of wherever it creates that all the way to this variable. So this variable here, account, is going to contain this new account with whatever the balance is. So it looks like the balance is 3,200. And that's what that account is going to hold. Okay, the two string method of a class can be called explicitly. So here we have a, a class called stock. Here we have an object of the stock class. So we're saying stock XYZ company equals new stock. So we're creating a stock with XYZ as the name and 9.62 is um, no idea what that is, but some floating point number that has to do with stocks. And it says system.out.println XYZ company dot to string. So it says the to string method does not have to be called explicitly, but it's called implicitly whenever you pass an object to the class to print line or print. So you can say XYZ.company dot company to string, or you can leave out the to string out. So if you just pass XYZ company, it's the same thing as doing this right here. So um, right here, it's the new stock. It has these two values. So when you system.out.print line XYZ company, the object, it's gonna print out XYZ 9.62 doesn't show it, but that that's what it's going to say. The stock data is, and then a new line, and then under that is going to print this and this. So that's why it says the two string method is called implicitly whenever you can concatenate an object of the class with a string. So it's getting called right there. All objects have a string method that returns the class name and a hash and a hash of the memory address of the object. We can override the default method with our own to print out more useful information. So all of them have a two string method and what this is saying is that you can create your own two string method. And if you create your own two string method, then it overrides the one that comes with the object. Um, okay, on this slide, it's talking about the equals method. It says when the equal equal operator is used with reference variables, remember reference variables um, are the objects. Objects contain addresses, and that's called a reference variable. So if, if I have an object, object one, and let's say that object one is of type rectangle, and I have object two, and that's of type rectangle, both of these are reference variables because these contain addresses to where the data of that object is kept. So this doesn't contain data, it contains an address. So it's referencing, let's say that this is EE, -E. this doesn't write very well, but this points to that location 
in memory call FFEE. This is a hexadecimal number. And this location then contains, like if this is an object of a rectangle, then this contains the length and the width and the numbers like five and 10. Length is five, width is 10. And then this points to that address F, whoops, F E zero. And here you actually have the length and the width of object one, length and width. And maybe that's, I don't know, three and two. So these objects, again, are called reference variables. They reference a location with this address. The contents of the objects are not compared. So here's the contents of this object and the contents of this object. Um, we can't compare those with the equal equal sign. We have to use an equal equals method. So the default operation of the equals method is to compare memory addresses of the objects just like the equal equal operator. So the equals, so actually the, what this is saying is if I do is object one equal equal to object two, it's actually comparing these addresses as an inside and if I use the equals method, it also compares the addresses inside. It doesn't compare the length and width. So that is what it's saying there. So equals and equals equals does the same thing and it's comparing the addresses. So it's not comparing the data. So let's look at this example. It says the stock class has an equals method. So they've actually uh, created Yeah, so all classes have an equals method. So here it says stock. So this is object 1. This is object 2. So object 1, object 2. My two objects have this data in it. So they're exactly, they're two separate objects with the same data, GMX 55.3. So it's saying you cannot do this right here. Okay, this is not gonna compare to see that GMX is equal to GMX and 55.3 is equal to 55.3. What this is doing, it is comparing the addresses. And we know that when you say new, stock one gets one address somewhere in memory, stock two gets an address somewhere in memory. So this is stock one, this is stock two. They have separate addresses. Stock one address points to this data, stock two address points to this data, wherever that is in memory. So this is always gonna give us this answer. The objects are not the same because the addresses are not the same. Instead of using the equal equal operator to compare two stock objects, we should use the equals method. And um, if you look in here, when we use the equals method, notice that we're saying object two dot symbol and share price equals object two dot share price. So now the objects can be compared by their con contents rather than by their memory addresses. So we have a we're creating our own equals method. We're passing it object two. 
So here's object two right here. So we say symbol dot equals object two symbol. So um and share price. So these are gonna be, um, we, we'd have to look at stock compare so we can look at these, but share price is gonna be in, it's gonna be some kind of um, field in the class. And then it says, is that equal to object two dot share price? So for this one, it, it would be good if we actually get to look at this Java just so we can see where these are coming from, share price and symbol. Um, but you you if you remember from back here, let's see if we can get back. This GMX right here, this is gonna be the symbol of a stock. All stocks have a three letter symbol. And uh, now I know what these numbers are. This is the stock price. So symbol and price. So if we look here, we're looking at the objects to symbol and share price and looking to see if that's equal to object two dot share price. Let me erase everything on here. Okay, I'm gonna stop this for a second and we're gonna look at some code um, that I included when I sent you this video. So I'm gonna pull up that code and we're gonna take a look at it. It's gonna be passing objects. So when you when you download the zip file, you're gonna um, you're gonna open the zip file, and it's gonna create a folder called Carpet Calculator. You're gonna open Online GDB, and you're going to go to new, um, not new file. I'm sorry, upload file. So the second button. And then um, you're going to go to your desktop, if that's where you put it, and go to Carpet Calculator, and then open each one of these files. So I'm going to open carpetcalculator.java, roomcarpet.java, and roomdimensions.java. So unzip your file and then upload those three. Now, when I do that, I still have this main here, which doesn't let me delete it, but I can, I can just get rid of that main. I can only have one main. Out of these three files, it can only be one main. So here's the main, it's under carpet calculator. That's the main. And then room carpet is just a class. It's a public class. Room dimensions is also a public class, okay? So we're working now with two classes. We've only, we've only worked with one class before. Smaller. All right, so our carpet calculator, let's look at this code. Um, right here, we have final double, so we're creating a constant. Can make that bigger. We have the length and the width. This is going to be the length of the width of the room um, that we want the the for the room that we want the carpet for. And then here we have room dimension and room carpet. These two are classes. So these are objects of that class. So these are the classes right here. Room carpet and room dimension. 
So room dimension, we'll look at it in a minute, but what it does is to hold the room dimensions. So it just holds how big your room is, 10 by 12, 14 by 16, so on and so forth. Whenever you buy carpet, even if the even if there's like a hallway or something, you're just gonna get the the max length width that you need, and then you cut out any parts that you're not needing. And then room carpet is gonna determine the cost. So in our main program, we're gonna ask the user right here, what is the length of your room and what is the width of your room? Then we're gonna call, um, we're gonna create a um, an object of room dimension with the length and the width. So let's take a look at this one right here. So once we get the length and the width, we're gonna pass it to um, this class, this constructor. So this is constructing an object and the object that is constructing is called dimensions. So let's go to room dimensions up here. There's room dimensions. So we've got a constructor right here, room dimensions, right? They gave us the length, they gave us the width. And remember when we construct an object, they give us the values that are going to set the fields of our classes. So our fields are private. So this is how you set the, that's how you change length and width. You say length equals LEN, width equals W. So just like we did in the, in the classes chapter. This should be a review. And then here is a method that the user can use to get the length. So if for some reason they want, we need to get the length, we can get it here, get the width, we can get it here, get the area of the room. And here we did a, um, a two string method. Remember that, um, Classes come with a two-string method, but here they're overriding that two-string method because we want, when we call two-string, we want it to look a certain way. So we want it to look like this. We want the length to show, and then uh, two numbers after the decimal, the width, two numbers after the decimal, and the area. So we want those three things to display, and we want it to look like this. So to show the length, we just put the field name length, the width length. To show the area, we have to call the method get area. So the method get area gets called. We jump to here, it calculates the area, and it returns it to this spot and displays it. And when you when you override this two string method what you're returning is a string, this object right here. So we're saying create a new string and str is gonna contain this right here, length, width, get area. Okay, so let's go back to main. So we created this dimensions object with the length and the width. Now, we're gonna to go to the room carpet class. We're gonna pass it this object dimension. So we're passing an object to this class, which is this whole new thing that we're adding that we hadn't done before. And then we're passing this final, this constant carpet price. So carpet price is $8 per, per square foot. So we're gonna pass it the eight and the object that contains the length and the width of the of the room. And then that creates us a new object called room. So let's go look at this room carpet class. So the room carpet class um, has two private fields. One of them is of type room dimension. So it actually creates an object called room dimensions. And then it has a just a, a primitive variable called carpet cost. And 
if we go back to main, we're calling we're we're calling the constructor call room carpet. Okay, so that's the first thing we do, the constructor. So let's look at the constructor. Here's the constructor right here. So they're gonna give me the object that contains the room dimensions and they're passing the cost. In here, we're gonna create a new room dimension. We're gonna get the length. We're gonna get the width and pass it. And it's gonna create this object called size. And then we're gonna copy, <clears throat> we're gonna copy carpet cost equals cost. So carpet cost is right here. So we're changing carpet cost. Size is right here. We're filling up this object with a size. Then here we get total cost. Total cost is carpet cost times size.get area. So get the area of the of the room 10 by 10 uh, would be 100 square feet times if it's ten dollars per square foot um, that'd be a thousand dollars right and then they also created their own two string method so they overrode the street room that way they could just decide how it how to output this information so they did room dimensions carpet cost. And then so room dimensions is found in size. Right here, right there, size. Remember that when you do this, when you print out size, um, just like this as the object, it's going to print size dot two string. So it's going to go over here. Doo -doo -doo -doo, and it's going to do it's going to print it like this. It's going to do this right here. That's what it's going to print because you overrode to string. And then it prints, so it prints size and then it print, it uh, calls get total cost. And that's this right here. And it prints the cost right there. Okay. So let's go ahead and run it. And let me push, I can push this up. Not letting me move it. Okay, give me just a second. Uh, here we go. Sorry, every time I use Zoom, Things get in the way and then I can't get to where I want. So is it enter the length first? Okay, so let's say that the again the room is 10 by 10. And then the width is 10. So it prints um length is 10, width is 10. Area is 100. Now remember that per square foot, it was $8 a square foot. So it multiplies the eight times the 100, which is the area, and it gives us $800. So in this example, we have two different classes we're working with. We're passing objects to classes. And we're returning objects from from classes. So oh, from methods, not classes, sorry. So in this example here, let's see, not this one. I'm trying to see one where we're This one is just a plain class like we did in chapter six. Room carpet is the one that has, um, it's using 
a class using another class because room carpet is using room dimensions. And then you right here, we're passing an object to a method. This is the constructor. And then here we're using the object size. We're using it and it's using the two string method that was overridden. So by looking at this, um, I've given you a little assignment to see if you can practice doing this. Um, super, super simple um, where we use the um, rectangle. I really, what I would like you to do is um, to create a rectangle, um, like the rectangle class that we had done. And that rectangle class, what I want to add to it is I want to add this. I want to add the two string. I want you to just write a two string method that overrides and, and then use it. See if um, you can do something like the length is, the width is, and then print those two values. So create your own two string method. Um, and then in class together, we can then uh, practice some more with passing objects from one method to another and returning objects, okay? So hopefully I'll give you some practice in um, in creating classes again, because we we actually have several chapters that from now on that deals with classes. All we're going to be doing is classes. So you want to get really comfortable with creating these. OK, so I'm going to give you a UML and then see if you can implement that UML. OK, with the rectangle class again. Since you're familiar with it. All right, guys. Hopefully I will see you on Tuesday. Bye.